Hi everyone, welcome to the Basic Science series by Dr. Lukinder Kumar. I have created this program to promote scientific knowledge among students and young researchers. In this episode, I will discuss about MRSA or sometimes referred as MRSA means methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. This presentation will explain in detail about what is MRSA, what is methicillin antibiotic, its mechanism of action against the bacteria, what is Staphylococcus aureus, and finally, last but not the least, how Staphylococcus aureus has developed the resistance against methicillin. MRSA means methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. This name has two parts. Part one is methicillin resistance, which indicates resistant to antibiotic methicillin. And part two is Staphylococcus aureus, which indicates the name of the bacteria. Staphylococcus aureus is a gram-positive, round-shaped bacterium, which is a member of the group Firmicutes. And it is a usual member of the microbiota of human body. Frequently found in upper respiratory tract and on the skin, Staphylococcus aureus usually acts as a commensal of human microbiota but it can also become an opportunistic pathogen. Opportunistic pathogen means a pathogen which do not cause any disease in healthy host. But when it gets opportunity, for example, a weak immune response of the host or during cancer, where host immunity is impaired, it can cause infection. Such pathogens are known as opportunistic pathogen. Staphylococcus aureus is a common cause of skin infection including abscesses, respiratory tract infections such as sinusitis, and food poisoning. This was the detailed information about the bacterial pathogen. Methicillin is a narrow-spectrum beta-lactam antibiotic of the penicillin class. Narrow-spectrum means it kills specific bacterial pathogens. It was discovered in 1960 at one time, methicillin was used to treat infection caused by certain gram-positive bacteria including Staphylococcus aureus, Staphylococcus epidermidis, Streptococcus pyogenes, and Streptococcus pneumoniae. Methicillin is no longer effective against these organisms due to the emergence of resistance. Methicillin is actually a beta-lactamase-resistant antibiotic. Beta-lactamase is a bacterial enzyme produced by bacteria resistant to other beta-lactam antibiotics, which hydrolyzes the antibiotic, rendering it non-functional. Very importantly, methicillin is not bound and hydrolyzed by beta-lactamases, means it can kill the bacteria even this enzyme is present. This raises a very important question that how this bacteria develops resistance before understanding that, let's first understand the mechanism of action of methicillin. Like other beta-lactam antibiotics, methicillin acts by inhibiting the synthesis of bacterial cell walls. Cell wall is very important for bacterial survival. It protects it from environmental stress. It inhibits cross-linkage between the linear peptidoglycan polymer chains that make up a major component of the cell wall of gram-positive bacteria. It does this by binding and competitively inhibiting the transpeptidase enzyme, also known as penicillin binding proteins, PBPs. These penicillin binding proteins cross-links glycopeptides known as D-alanylalanine forming the peptidoglycan cell wall. In simple words, Staphylococcus aureus cells contain penicillin binding proteins on the surface of bacterial cell. In susceptible cells, the methicillin binds to these proteins and destabilizes the structure of cell wall of Staphylococcus aureus that leads to the cell lysis. But Staphylococcus aureus has evolved against this mechanism by changing normal penicillin binding proteins to new penicillin proteins called PBP2A. This PBP2A works in a similar manner to other penicillin binding proteins, but it binds with beta-lactam by very low affinity. 
means they do not compete efficiently with the natural substrate of the enzyme and will not inhibit cell wall biosynthesis. Expression of PBP2A refers resistant to all beta lactams. This protein is expressed by MEC A gene in Staphylococcus aureus. This was the very basic information about the MRSA. In the next episode, we will discuss about the isolation and identification of MRSA, including the method of detection, as well as the treatment options available for MRSA. Stay tuned for the next presentation. If you like the presentation, please share the video with students and young researchers. Please subscribe the YouTube channel to get updates on new presentation on basic science topics. Please forgive my mistakes. Thank you and Namaste.